Hello guys, welcome back to Take Dose and in this video we will learn about the segmented sieve which is from number theory maths topic. A prerequisite before watching this video is to watch my video on how to find all the factors of a given number n and the sieve of Eratosthenes. Both these links will be given in the i button and also in the description below so you just go and watch them. If you already know these two things uh, then we can proceed and at the end of the video I will be showing you the exact code implementation of the segmented sieve so stay tuned till the end uh, now let's understand the problem statement in this problem uh, we are given to find the prime number in the range of l to r where l is less than r now if you follow the sieve of Eratosthenes method then you need to make a boolean array of size r plus 1 which is from 0 to r and therefore the space complexity will be order of r you know that the time complexity will be order of r log log r right and uh, you can take an example like finding the primes from 100 to 200 you need a space of 200 one size boolean array from 0 to 200 right so this was sieve of Eratosthenes. now let's consider two cases and uh, let's try to see what will be the space required by the sieve of Eratosthenes method now in case number one we have l value equals to 10 to the power 6 and the r value is 10 to the power 6 plus 10 to the power 6 now the space required by the sieve of Eratosthenes will be 2 into 10 to the power of 6 right which is order of r now if you take a boolean element to be one byte then the total space required will be 2 times 10 to the power 6 bytes which will be equals to 2 mb right now if you look at the second case where i have taken a higher l and r values so l value is 10 to the power of 12 and the r value is 10 to the power of 12 plus 10 to the power of 6 now if you see the difference r minus l in both the case 1 and case 2 the difference is same okay the gap between r and l is the same but then the value of l and r has been shifted from 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power of 12 right so in this case if you follow the sieve of Eratosthenes then the space complexity will be order of the higher number that is order of r which is approximately 10 to the power of 12 because 10 to the power 6 is very very insignificant in comparison to 10 to the power 12 so we can ignore that and uh, so the actual space the runtime space which it will take is considering each item uh, being one byte that is boolean uh, therefore it will be one terabyte okay so in this case if we are solving for this range of l and r 10 to the power 12 range uh, then we cannot use sieve of Eratosthenes because definitely we do not have one tb of memory right therefore in such kind of situations uh, we need another technique which is very very space efficient and that technique is segmented sieve okay so segmented sieve is useful when the range is small uh, but the numbers can be very high like as you can see in case 2 the range is exactly the same if you find out r minus l it will be 10 to the power of 6 and in the first case as well it is 10 to the power of 6 but then the numbers are high when uh, you see case 2 right so in case 2 segmented sieve is more suitable so before starting segmented sieve you should know about the primality test that if n doesn't have any factor from 2 to root n then n is a prime number as i had already shown in my previous video finding all factors of a number n factors always exist in pairs right so where if a comma b are factors of n uh, then we can say that a is less than equals to square root of n if that is the case then b will be greater than equals to square root of n right if i consider a will be less than equals to b such that a into b will always be equals to n okay you can check this out in my previous video I would like to announce about our live training programs data structures and algorithms which is interview dose and system design which is design dose if you are looking for making a switch from service to product based or even make a product based to product based top tier switch and aiming for your dream company this is the best curriculum you can ever join i'll be your mentor throughout the cohort and i will help you clear all your doubts in the one-on-one -on -one sessions you can know more about this by querying us on the whatsapp number or you can also visit our website techdose.co.in let's look at the segmented sieve now before explaining any reasoning i will just flow through the step segmented sieve consists of four steps you should look at the steps and at the end you will get the entire idea with reasoning about why certain step was done now let's look at step number one which says find all the primes till square root of r 
In this case, we have taken L value equals to 18 and R value 26. So square root of R will be equals to square root of 26, which is 5. Okay. Using the sieve of Eratosthenes, we will initialize a Boolean array is prime of size square root of R plus 1. In this case, all the values will be true by default saying that all the numbers are prime initially. And then we have to iterate starting from 2, starting from 2 till square root of 5. Square root of 5 is also 2 when you consider the floor value of square root of 5. So from 2 to 2, we need to iterate and we need to mark all the multiples of 2 as non-primes if 2 is prime. So yes, 2 is prime because we have we are seeing true here. So mark all the multiples of 2. So if you mark all the multiples of 2, this becomes a non-prime number. Why don't we iterate for 3? Because uh, 3 is greater than square root of 5. You can follow the same method video for this reasoning. Now we need to iterate from 2 till square root of r and see wherever you have true, you have to save all those numbers into the prime number. So our prime numbers are 2, 3, 5. Okay. So if you know sieve of Eratosthenes, this is a very simple step for you. The space complexity in this case is order of square root of r which was used by is prime. And the time complexity is square root of r log log square root of r. Okay. So this is the sieve of Eratosthenes method getting used by the segmented sieve. This is step number one. So step number one gives us all the prime numbers. What is step number two? Step number two says that make an array of size r minus l plus one which is the range uh, which offsets l to zero. So in our example l value was equals to 18 r value was 26. So I need to offset this L value to 0 in such a way that the 19 will become 1, the 20 will become 2 and so on. 26 will become 26 minus 18, right? And that will be equals to 8. Okay. So we need to create that offset. Therefore, we need an array of size 9, which is 26 minus 18 plus 1. And you can see that I have already created an array of size 9 from 0 to 8. Now 0 here denotes 18 right because if you are moving a number line from 18 to 26 you are offsetting it in such a way that it starts with 0 then the range i mean the length of the range will be the same right so how did you offset it by subtracting from 18 so all the numbers needs to be subtracted by 18 and so 26 must also be subtracted by 18 and this becomes it and that is how we have created this offset okay this is very similar to the is prime but I have just named it sep uh, differently segmented sieve, the seg sieve. Okay. I have also written the actual numbers which it denotes. Okay. So that you can better understand all these things. So if you consider this to be similar to the is prime, then the true here denotes that it is a prime number. So just like in the sieve of Eratosthenes, in this case as well, I will mark default values as true, assuming all of the numbers are prime in the given range. Now we will move to step number three. In step number three, what we do is we will see all the prime numbers from 1 to square root of r. We have already saved all the prime numbers from 1 to square root of r, right? And we will iterate through all of these primes one by one and we will mark all the multiples of that prime in the segmented sieve. Okay. Now, why do we do that? Because if we take a prime number r, which is 26, then according to our primality test, if there is no factor of r from 2 to square root of r, then r will be a prime number. Okay, simply. So, if I have all the prime numbers from uh, 1 to square root of r, and if none of these prime numbers could divide a number in this given range, uh, then actually that number will be a prime number. Okay, simple. So, let's iterate for 2. Now, what will be the iteration step for 2? I can simply say that okay 2 will go to 18 20 22 mark all the multiples of 2 as true but in the code how you can find it is uh, choose the l value l value is equals to 18 right so in order to find the first multiple you have to divide it by 2 let's say that uh, this is the divisor which is the prime number p okay so p is the prime number so if you divide l by p you will get the uh, dividend by which you need to multiply isn't it so 18 by 2 will be equals to 9. So from 9, uh, you can start multiplying. So 9 times of 2 is 18 and you can mark it as false. Then you can do plus 1 at every stage. And so the multiple now becomes 10. 
so 10 times of 2 is 20 and so you can mark it as false next time it will be 11 11 times of 2 is 22 you can mark it as false and similarly you can keep marking it false until you actually exceed the r value okay this is how uh, we will be implementing in the code now when all the multiples of 2 have been done take the next prime number okay so for 3 again you can calculate like 18 by 3 when you do 18 by 3 you have to always take the seal value okay always take the seal value if you take the floor value then maybe you will get a segmentation fault how you can get it let's take an example of uh, l value equals to 17 and if you had divided it by 2 you will get a multiple of 8 and if you multiply 8 by 2 you will get 16 and 16 minus l which is 17 you will have index minus 1 and this index will be out of bound and hence you will get segmentation fault in order to avoid segmentation fault you should take a seal value okay now for 3 again uh, you can start marking 18 is already marked 21 is not marked 24 is marked and now you will go out of bounds same thing you do for 5 20 is marked uh, 25 was not marked so you mark it now you are done marking all the numbers in the range and whichever are still true will be the prime numbers so step number four says that you just iterate through this entire list and find out what all numbers are true okay if you find true at one then you add the offset l value which is 18 and you will get it as 19 right so the prime numbers in the range of 18 to 26 is 19 then you have 23 so i think there are only two prime numbers so this is the entire segmented sieve process i hope you were able to understand this uh, now the time complexity in this case is in step one we had used the sieve of Eratosthenes which was square root of r log log square root of r and in step number two we were finding all the prime numbers according to the Gaussian estimation the chance of a given number n being prime is 1 by log n okay and uh, therefore the prime still n will be n by log n therefore the number of prime still square root of r will be square root of r log of square root of r so this will be square root of r and multiply that by the given range which was the size of the segmented sieve so this will be the time complexity okay why this is multiplied because we were iterating for each of the prime numbers being found from 1 to square root of r these are the count of those prime numbers and uh, we will just be iterating over the given range from l to r right so that's why this range is getting multiplied now the space complexity will be square root of r for the sieve of Eratosthenes okay sieve of Eratosthenes and r minus l for the segmented sieve so this is the uh, total space complexity now looking at our case number two and let's analyze how much space it will take by the segmented sieve the l value being 10 to the power of 12 r value being 10 to the power 12 plus 10 to the power 6 now the space complexity will be square root of r plus r minus l square root of r because of the sieve of Eratosthenes finding all primes from 1 to square root of r so that is 10 to the power of 6 because square root of this 10 to the power 12 plus 10 to the power 6 is equivalent to 10 to the power of 6 if we ignore this because this is a very small value right now if you add this up it will be 2 into 10 to the power 6 and if we consider each boolean to be one byte then this makes it 2 mb as compared to the sieve of Eratosthenes, which was taking 2 tb memory it is a huge difference right it is a huge optimization in terms of space therefore segmented sieve is extremely useful here I hope you understood the use case of segmented sieve right now finally we will look at the code of the segmented sieve in this case ll means the long long variable because your normal 32 bit integer cannot represent 10 to the power 12 so i have taken long long which can go till 10 to the power of 18 64 bytes so vector is a list a dynamic list so vector long long segmented sieve long long l long long r in this case i have created the primes array and uh, I am not writing the code for sieve of Eratosthenes which I had shown you in the previous video this is step number one find all the primes in the range of 1 to square root of r step one using sieve of Eratosthenes once you get all the primes in the primes array the second step is to create segmented sieve list right uh, by the way you can create it just like a boolean list right the second one uh, can be a boolean instead of a long long this will save you space yes now in this case uh, I am just creating a segmented sieve of side, uh, size r minus l plus 1 this was step number 2. Now in step number 3 once you have all the primes iterate over all the primes and find out the divisor 
that means you have to take the seal not the floor uh, but the seal i explained you the reason just to avoid the segmentation fault right so d will start with l by p seal of it and uh, it will go till p into d less than equals to r because we should not overflow and plus plus d yes the multiple will be increasing in steps of one i already showed this to you this is step number three we need to mark all the multiples of the prime numbers in the range of 1 to uh, square root of r we need to mark all their multiples in the range of l to r right once step 3 is done we will go to step 4 so i have cleared the prime array so this will remove all the elements from the prime array and simply i will just iterate uh, from the 0th index to r minus lth index right and in the segmented c and see what all are true if if a number is true then it is a prime number and i will push it into the primes list and simply i will return the prime numbers okay so this will return all the primes in the range of l to r so this is all about segmented sieve i think it is easy it is not very difficult i hope you understood this like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you